Hey guys, Liz Morris from The Nail Hub here, and I am back with part two of our nail allergy conversation. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of the most important parts of using any artificial nail product, which is polymerization. Now, in the gel nail world, polymerization happens when we expose our product to ultraviolet light. And as you recall from our last conversation about the formula that we use, the photo initiators is what needs to be matched to our UV lamp in order to be able to properly cure our product, as well as considering things like pigmentation, monomer content, reactive sites, all of that good stuff. So if you haven't watched my first video talking about the actual formulaic importance, I want you guys to go back and watch that first and then come back here to continue on with UV light. So let's start with demystifying or correcting a little bit of misinformation, well, a lot of misinformation that exists in our industry about UV lamps. There is unfortunately a very popular phrase that is used in our industry, which is UV versus LED. You'll see this all over the place on gels, on lamps, on all kinds of documentation. What's really interesting about this is UV is a type of light an LED is actually a type of bulb, if you will, that we use to emit UV light. So one is an actual emitter and one is an actual type of light, and they really are not properly communicated by comparing them against one another. All nail lamps on the market emit ultraviolet light or near ultraviolet light. And in order to understand the spectrum of light that we use to cure gels, we need to go back to our high school chemistry lessons. So you may remember learning about the spectrum of light in high school. The spectrum of light basically shows us a whole range of energy wavelengths that manifest as colors we can see with the naked eye. So you can see red, blue, green, all kinds of different light depending on that energy wavelength. Now, a lot of people always ask me about nanometers. Nanometers refers to the distance between the peaks of the wavelengths. So that allows us to know whether the wavelengths are very tight together and a very high frequency, or if the wavelengths are very far apart and they are a lower frequency. So 365 nanometer is the wavelength of light that was popularly emitted by our traditional technology in the gel nail industry, which was CFL. CFL stands for compact fluorescent lamp, or we call it a bulb. They were those white tube glass bulbs that you would plug into your lamp. You would replace them every so often, and they emitted this nice kind of ambient white glow. They were an amazing technology because they were very standardized and very consistent, but there were a couple things that we didn't like about them that we opted to move into the LED technology space. CFL was a lot longer of a curing process. A lot of gels required three to five minutes of curing time per layer, which can add to just building your overall service time. And also we had to replace those bulbs pretty frequently. They degraded very quickly with constant use. And they also had a warm up period. So our lamp needed to be on for a little bit in order for us to get the full potential out of those bulbs. Because of the trade-offs we had with CFL, we opted to move as an industry into a better technology, which is LED. Now, LED is a little finicky, but it does have a couple key advantages. It's able to penetrate deeper into the gel because it's a more focused type of light. We're able to decide which emitters we wanna have for the different wavelengths we want to, to use. And also it allows for us to have the same LEDs emitting light consistently over a longer period of time without needing to be replaced. So our gels cure more thoroughly as well as faster, and we're able to get more life or useful life out of the LEDs themselves. Now you may have heard of something called hybrid lamps or full spectrum lamps, and that refers to the ability to cure those older style 365 nanometer gels that we had when we were using CFL technology. As people transitioned away from those types of lamps and those kinds of formulas, we needed people to be able to buy a lamp that was able to service the newer LED style gels as well as their traditional UV gels. So by having the 365 and the 405 nanometer together in one lamp, it allows us to basically cure all types of gel on the market. So we need our gel formula to be properly matched to the lamp that we're using. But beyond just matching those nanometers, we need to also understand the emittance value of our lamp. Emittance refers to the 
potency or the amount of energy that our lamp is actually emitting. So beyond having the proper wavelength, 365, 405, or even a hybrid of those two things, we need to also understand how much energy is actually being emitted by that lamp that is going to properly activate our photo initiators. Wattage is unfortunately the number that we have put onto every single lamp in the marketplace, but wattage isn't really what tells us exactly what the emittance value is of a lamp. It doesn't tell us the actual concentration or potential of that lamp. Wattage really tells us how much power is being consumed by the lamp, which we would assume all of that power would be translating into the energy that the lamp is producing in order to activate our photo initiators, but it's not quite accurate and it doesn't give us exactly a clear picture. So there are some other measurements we can take, which is looking at the actual UV emittance of the lamp to see if it's actually emitting enough energy to properly activate our products. So you can see how a lot of this isn't obvious to the naked eye or isn't able to be gleaned from super simplistic tests. In my last video, I talked about how there's a lot of nail technicians or users that are applying layers of gel on plastic sheets, curing it in the lamp, peeling it off and seeing if it's cured all the way through. And yes, I mean, that is a good first place to start with looking at is the lamp curing your product at all, but it doesn't actually tell us if the product is being fully cured all the way through. And that's also where a big risk of developing nail allergies can come from. When we use any lamp and think it's going to serve its purpose, and we use simplistic tests of thinking that the gel is hardened because we can visually check that, the problem is that inside the gel may not actually be fully cured. So even though it appears to be cured and hardened, it may not actually be cured to safe levels. And our lamp plays a key role in that. That's why a lot of manufacturers will tell you, stick with the lamp that goes with your gel system. Don't be buying generic lamps online to use across all of your gels. And if you want to use multiple brands of product, try to consolidate down to a meaningful list of things that you're actually going to use on a regular basis, because the more brands you carry, obviously the more variables that adds into the situation. And that's where a lot of us are getting into trouble is that we are just grabbing everything that we can find. We're mixing it all together. And then we're thinking that we have one universal lamp to cure them all. And lamps truly have been aligned to make sure that they match with those photo initiators, that they emit enough energy. And also pigment can also play a huge role. Depending on the way that that gel is formulated, it may not be compatible with that lamp just because the lamp is not able to penetrate deeply enough into that product to cure it completely. So the lamp conversation gets pretty complex, but again, I have some very high level red flags that I wanted to share with you guys so that if you're not interested in getting into all of the nitty gritty information about how UV lamps cure our products or what you need to know about electrical components, I wanted to give you just some general guidelines that you guys can use when either shopping for products or using your lamp. So let's start with use and just handling of a lamp. There's a couple things to stay away from. One is don't use cheap extension cords. Cheap extension cords can constrict the amount of electricity going to your lamp, which means your lamp isn't getting the full juice it needs to operate at its full potential. And also increasing the distance between an outlet and your lamp and using multiple extension cords can also have a big effect on the amount of emittance value your lamp is actually having. I also definitely recommend to stay away from rechargeable lamps if you possibly can. I know that rechargeable lamps are convenient for things like pedicures or doing services on the go, but rechargeable lamps are one of those things where they don't emit consistent power. The first time you cure a product with a fully charged lamp, it will cure at the full emittance value. But every subsequent cure that you do after that, the power is going down and down and down and down until the battery is completely exhausted. The battery also gets older over time, which means it's not able to fully charge as it was before. And so I find that if you want consistent curing power, layer after layer or manicure after manicure, the best option is a plug-in lamp to ensure that consistency in your curing. Now, when shopping for UV lamps, as I mentioned, wattage is not a great indicator. I actually, with all of my lab testing, have never found a lamp higher than probably 36 to 48 watts that actually made a marked difference on how it actually cured the product. 
More wattage just means more LEDs, and if a lamp needs that many LEDs, it usually means it's using low quality LEDs and it just needs more of them. So less quality, more quantity, that's a red flag for me. It also just means that there's a lot of electricity going to components, the lamp's probably gonna get hot, it's gonna be emitting a lot more UV than it probably needs to to even cure our products, and there is such a thing as too much. We only want a certain amount of UV to properly cure our gels, but we don't wanna be exposing ourselves to so much ultraviolet light that it's going beyond creating excess heat, creating excess, excess exposure. We just want it to be just right, all right? Another red flag when looking at lamps is the quality of the actual build, the housing, and the components. Now, there are such things as bin numbers for LEDs. LEDs definitely have grades to them. There are very high quality LEDs. There are very low quality LEDs. Um, but also housing is a great way to look at it. So housing means the actual outside of the lamp, what it's housed in, what all the electrical components are housed in. You can see how many LEDs are actually in this lamp, which to me means a lot lower quality LEDs are being used, but there's more of them just to canvas the area more. It's also got a plastic interior and a plastic base. So this manufacturer opted to go with cheaper materials, which to me, again, is a little bit of a red flag. It also feels very lightweight. It doesn't feel super robust to me. Um, the base is very thin plastic. The lamp feels like nothing. And even just the quality of the buttons, it just doesn't feel like a robust piece of equipment. So that is definitely something I look for. I also look at where I'm buying my lamps from. I have to be honest, I've never found a high quality lamp on typical generic shopping sites. So just think about where you're sourcing your products from because it does make a huge difference. So these are just a few high level things that you can look for when shopping for nail lamps. And like I said, it's usually best to buy the nail lamp that goes with your brand, but the caveat there is that your brand has to be high quality too. Price point is also a big red flag. It's very, very difficult to find a full-sized five finger lamp for probably less than $175. And that is because again, the components are expensive. It's expensive to manufacture these and also import them. So if you're finding super, super cheap price points like 50, 40, $30 for a nail lamp and it's a full size lamp, if it's plastic and it has all of those other things I just mentioned, it's probably not a very high quality option. The further we get away from actual near UV light, like 365 nanometer wavelengths, the more we're able to cure our gels properly without all of that traditional UV exposure on our hands and on our fingers. So with violet light, which is on that 400, 405 end of the nanometer wavelength spectrum, we are able to, again, cure those products really efficiently with a lot less energy needed and we don't have all of that excess exposure that we don't really want other than curing the product on our nails. We're also able to shrink down the actual size of the lamps or the amount of LEDs needed to cure, and that's why you're starting to see mini lamps come out. Mini lamps have been around for a long time, but the latest ones, like for example, the LE mini dot that we have on the nail hub, this is a great example of a lamp that cures just as well as a full-size five-finger lamp, and it cures very efficiently, very thoroughly, and with only three LEDs inside. So it has lower wattage, lower LED count, and it's also less expensive. So this is a great option for people who are looking for a low barrier to entry for buying a lamp that's going to cure their products properly, but it also is going to cure your products to safer levels. As someone who's been working in this industry for well over a decade and using gel nail products the entire time, I myself have never developed a nail allergy to anything I've used, but that's because I've always used very high quality brands and also made sure I understand how to properly cure my products so that I'm eliminating a lot of that risk inherent in using and handling things like acrylates. Part of what brings me joy in my role in this industry is taking very complex topics that I love to nerd out on, breaking them down into layman's terms and sharing that digestible information with people like you. So if this is a little bit overwhelming or if this is your first time hearing this information, don't get concerned. It's just important to be aware of these things and to think about things you could change in your process as far as what you're using, how you're using it, and even just maintenance of equipment and purchasing decisions that are really gonna make the difference between whether you're not, you're in a medium to high risk situation with your nail care, or if you're in a very low risk situation with your nail care. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.